Hello everyone, this is Robert again, coming at you with another video. Today's video is going to be a challenge video. Building a survival shelter with natural materials without any survival building gear. Do I do not have my pocket chainsaw on me, or do I have my survival wire saw on me? I don't have any paracord on me either for tying down the shelter. The only thing, the only things I do have with me are my raincoat, plastic Ziploc, court, a court plastic Ziploc bag. When it starts raining out, I can put my phone in here and still record. A pair of gloves, my keys, a lighter. This is not any, this will not help me in any way to build the shelter. Maybe just to build a fire. Because I have my cigarettes on me. So, this challenge is strictly for building a survival shelter. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, it has already rained out and it's going to be raining out again tonight. So, I'm just putting everything in my pockets while I'm talking. So, it's going to be raining again tonight. So, if I'm ever out in the woods with no gear, I just want to practice to see if I can build a survival shelter with natural materials without any kind of hand saw or wire saw with me. If you would like to do this, just make sure by no means do I want you to be putting yourself in a survival situation. Now I can walk out of these woods within half an hour to 45 minutes and be out on the road in the relative safely. Don't put yourself in a survival situation unless you're very sure that you are able to do this without any equipment. Don't put your life at risk in the woods. Always try to practice, prepare, and have fun doing it. But don't put your life in danger. Now this will be real time. I will not be stopping the phone, the video, one other thing I do have is this little clock. So I can show you every now and then the time that, for the time it, what time it is. So I have plenty of falling down limbs around here. I have this falling down branch wedged in between these two trees, well this one tree, but it has a V trunk. This is very sturdy, it's wedged in there. This will be a great shelter frame, which in another video I'll be showing for natural, finding natural shelter frames. I found this one in that video. That's why I'm doing this video, this challenge video, right here. No, I just have to clean it up a little bit. But for right now, first I want to start collecting all these down branches and limbs to construct an A-frame. So, well, a lean-to. First I'll probably be doing a lean-to starting in the back of this. Then I'll probably put some beams across here and have an opening right here so I can at least, at least get in and out of it. But this tree is pretty big. I don't want to really be crawling too much in there. And if I find enough downed limbs and everything, I'll probably even try to make a raised bed on it. So, 
me get my gloves on and we'll get started. Leave my raincoat right there. Now it's eleven forty nine. So let's get started. I'll be bringing the camera around with me. This is a nice, big, long branch. All I have to do is break this a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is collect everything and drop it right around where the shelter that I'm gonna be, be building. Tripod's getting caught on a lot of vines and small sticks. Get another good piece of wood. And here's a whole big branch. Now the reason why I'm collecting first to see how much material I can get. Now if I would be staying here at night, all this is all dry wood. So that would be good for fire making. It's been up off the ground. The wind's been blowing here through here pretty good, so it's pretty much dry, so it should make good firewood to start a fire, but I'm not going to be doing a fire tonight because I'm not staying here, I'm just doing this video first. I had another nice big branch. Break this. I'm gonna drag this whole thing over here. If you can see how long that is, it's pretty long. Still had a lot of dry twigs on it. That's too rotted. I don't want to get anything too rotted. Then I don't want it to... See, I just picked this up. I just picked this up and it rotted. It broke right in my hand. So rotted. Oh, this is, that looks like a nice, another nice big good branch. That's way too big. Way too rotted too. If it's too rotted, you don't really wanna take a rotted branch.
this one's nice. See, and the sun's starting to, trying to come out through the clouds. That's always a nice sign. It's always good to have gloves with gloves with you. you never know when, when you're gonna be using your hands with rotted rotten wood. That's no good. Hey, let's drag this big branch to my shelter site. I can easily use about 10 feet of that branch. Split it in two, have two five foot branches. A lot of these branches and tree trunks are rotted. That's no good. I'm just trying to get good enough branches fast enough to do a shelter with. A lot of picky vines too. Try to see if I can break this one rather yeah, easy. I just stand on it and it broke right in half. So that's no good. this falling down big falling down branch I think it was a whole branch I don't even know where which tree came from that's it come out come out son Now I can't work with this because I I do not have any kind of saw or cutting gear with me. But this would be perfect. This tree, this big branch is not rotted. I could be cutting off this limb, this limb, and even the main limb of the branch. But I don't have any cutting material, cutting tools. And that's why I'm here, to practice.
even that's too fresh for me to break apart. This is a nice solid one. It's not that rotted yet. So this is a good one. This one's nice and solid. And there's this one. Hey, did you hear that crack? This probably won't be a good one. I'd probably use this for my raised bed. Bring these two to the site, then I'll come back and grab those two. Now this video maybe in two or three parts so there's gonna be a part two and possibly a part three depending how long this video is i don't want to be having like a two hour video you know i don't think it's, this is gonna take two hours but I'll have it in two or three parts. Go so check out this other branch that, that's falling down. Pot seems pretty solid. Just find a big rock, bang it on the rock until all the um, the rotten pots come off. Bang it on the rock. Then you can see what pot's rotting, rotting, and what pot is pretty. It's good enough to uh, support for the shelter. That whole log is rotted. Cause anything on the ground and underneath leaves that's been covered by a couple years of leaves, I don't think it's good. Cause then it gets too saturated with water and gets rotted too fast. The whole branch is all rotted.
Maybe I can use this for my raised bed. Oh no, this is a better piece. That's a nice thick piece. Now this will take a little while because you're walking back and forth, but well worth it to look around, to try to find the materials you need to build your shelter. getting rotted but still too much for me to take when I don't have any saws or anything. Now I have my I have my raincoat off because you don't want to be sweating. Tonight it's going to be like down to 65 but raining. And you do not want to be wet even in 65 degree weather because that is a good possibility that you will get hypothermia if you're wet even if it's 65 degrees hey, this branch seems good enough Brent, that log is way too spotted. Try to go try to look for a few more. I think I found some shingles for the roof. Tree is pretty much dead. The bark is still on it. If I can strip as much of this bark off as I can in big enough pieces that is. I think I probably have some shingles after I build the frame. Throw 
these two over there. For now, um, oh, and then see on this side of the big branch that fell, broke this birch tree. I'm going to try to pull this out and drag it here. Yeah. Pretty long branch. Seems pretty sturdy. Base of this two rotted. Yeah. We always do this for my bed. Bring this over here. Taking a little walk around here. Keep scanning inside the woods. Maybe you can find another dead tree. Dead standing tree. Put in another tree. It seems kind of sturdy. It's not that rotted. Lead this over here until I come back. Good. Well, 
Ooh, there's one over here. See how good this one is. Between these two, tripping all over her picky vines, slipping on wet logs underneath the leaves. This other one that I dropped here. <clears throat> hey. Let's see if this is enough wood. To get a spot, to get a shelter going. I'm going to put the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. I can use this lock. try to break some of these longer branches. Going too not straight enough.
1221 right now. Wait, say it started at about quarter past 12. Then you have this. You have uh, two trees close together, or a tree with, with a beet trunk. Put the wood between the trees. And pull. Make the wood easier. That is, if the wood is squatted enough, you can't even break the rest of this. Trying to get the trying to get the sharper edges aiming down so I can jam them into the ground a little bit for a little bit added extra stability.
should be so much easier with a saw. One good thing, it's not raining out right now. I think I need some more wood.
Well, there it is so far. It would be almost ready if I had a tarp or a poncho or even plastic trash bag. We'll find uh, maybe a few more pieces of wood, a few more falling down branches. Throw that torch there. See it falling down the tree over here. It don't look that big. That's going to be too much of a problem. It's going to be too much of a problem. Don't try to work too hard collecting material, but then you start to sweat. This should be enough to finish it off. I like to finish off the frame of the roof. You may have to walk a little bit through picky vines and bushes just to find good material. In order to survive a night.
Hey. That frame pretty much almost looks done. But I couldn't get these two or these four up higher to match these. So it'll kind of be like an at an angle. Now another thing I was thinking of doing was getting vines. Even though they have some a little bit of thorns on them, that's why I have my gloves. Get the watch out, you don't get binds, the pickies in your face. And back to the shelter. Now, if you haven't already figured out why I was grabbing vines, is to tie up the wood so it'll stay together, because I don't have my paracord bracelet, or I don't have any paracord in my pocket. So, look for some vines, you have natural cordage. I don't even know if this will work because when you try to tie it, oh, figures, this one will tie into a knot. 
But when I was trying it over there, it was always breaking in half. Twist it around, put that one in, inside it. Twist it around, just tuck it inside. It's not going to be the tightest, most secure knot, but it may help. I would not try this without gloves on. If you can see all these little thorns right there. But it's pretty sharp. Try this line. That's not really gonna work that good. But you get the idea. Now, right behind it. I have my shingles. Let's go to that tree and get some more shingles.
come on. This little sapling is right in the way. Look at this nice big piece of shingle. Try to get this to the shelter without breaking it. I'd rather break it while I'm at the shelter so I can size it up. Okay, hey, that's it. It's all the shingles I have right now. This is a big falling down tree. If I had a knife, I could take, I could cut all that bark off, and that would be nice shingles too. But. and throw leaves on it. Well, they're the back of it for now. I have some leaves on it. I throw more on. I have that bark on it for shingles. I don't really have enough um, lot long logs that are sturdy enough to um, make a raised bed. Unless, let me try something here.
try to bang this one on the rock. See if it'll split in half. Now if I get maybe about four more, it's not going to be the most comfortable, but it will keep me off the ground. This is a good, probably three inches off the ground. Hopefully that would be enough to protect me from the ground sucking all the body heat out of me. Found this rock earlier. It's kind of a sharp edge, almost. Not as much as a knife. This is a dead tree that I was talking about. Pretty long tree. It was pretty tall. is way too tight on it. Now if I had a knife, I could just put the knife down like this, tap it with a, with a piece of stick, kind of try to split it. Maybe next time when I try to finish up this shelter, when I have my survival, my, my survival gear, like my knife, and a saw. I'll try to get this bark off to put some shingles on that shelter.
trying to break this, probably get another section out of this, but it's breaking this log. Jingles. You know, there's a couple of small holes in it, packed over with leaves. And you'll have a protective covering. Aha, there it is. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to do this one. Oh yeah. Just gonna wipe all this um, mold and mildew and stuff off. Let's see if I can get one more. Knocked over the tripod. <coughs> hey, they did a deck. I to uh, bring these one at a time. And there you have it. Now there's may not be the most comfortable raised bed that you can make, but you're off the ground. And you have somewhat of a roof over you. Now, if I would take a rock, try to bang all that 
bark off of the tree that I was bit trying to break these on I could get all that bark off make shingles for the whole entire A-frame no lean to not A-frame A-frame would be another row of sticks this way which that would require more walking around the woods more foraging for wood and if I had, like again, my pocket chainsaw or even my survival wire saw, I could have cut up that branch, that big branch. I could have gotten a lot more material off of that. But this is a challenge. And it's going on an hour and 21 minutes. This may be a four part video. But. There it is. Making a natural survival shelter with natural materials without any survival tool gear. No saws, no wire saws, no hatchet, no nothing. Just find a, try to find a nice natural shelter frame then you find a big branch wedged in a feed trunk tree try to collect as much material as you can try to make sure that the wood is not too rotted because if it's too rotted it may be too weak to hold some bark on it or in a lot of leaves and it'll just, it'll just cave, cave in on you. you. Try to make a raised bed as well, just so you can get yourself up off the ground, so the you won't have a chance of the ground sucking out the body heat from you. And that's a good, another, I believe that's convection, I believe it is. Or conduction, one of those. I know I would have to read it again too. I'm still learning, and that's why I did this because I'm learning and I'm practicing. So keep practicing on your survival shelters, raised beds, fire making, and all other, and all other bushcraft because survive practice is the key to survival. And by all means, if you're going to do this with no gear, make sure you can get out of the woods safely because you do not want to put yourself into a real survival situation unless you really have to. If you're just going to be practicing, oh well then good. If you don't feel safe going out there with no survival gear, like if you want to bring your Baco Laplander folding saw, by all means, do it. But if you would like to do a challenge like this, just make sure you're safe and you can get home to your family safe. And just keep practicing. Because, again, practice is the key to survival. Well, I hope you like enjoyed this video. This is more likely going to be a four-part video. I don't want to make them too long for you. And I'll catch you on my next videos. I'm looking forward to making more for you. Please subscribe, hit the like button, comment, and by all means, feel free to share all my videos. This is Robert. Thank you for watching.